Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. Can you hear the birds in the background? They are just singing their praises to the Lord and it was a lot chillier here today and it stormed again all night long so we're even more wet here now and hey got to do what you got to do but i'm gonna let this dry up a little bit because the forecast does say sunny and 70 degrees by noon so yeah i'm gonna go in the house i'm gonna do a few of the chores that really need to get done in there that's kind of been neglected and i will talk to all of you in just a little while I wanted to take a moment and show you these bleeding hearts. I just thought that they were absolutely beautiful. And there is a story behind these bleeding hearts. You see, the year after my little son Timmy died, I had bought two plants of bleeding hearts. I planted one at his grave and I planted one in this bucket. And this bleeding heart has been blooming every year since the year 2000. The next thing I wanted to show you was this bush. I have no idea what it is, but it sure is pretty. I grew it from a twig. Yeah, just a little twig. And this is what it's grown into. So if anybody can identify what this little beauty is, I'd really appreciate it. Well, here we are, and it is late. It is seven o'clock at night, and yeah, I've been busy struggling, trying to dig up a plant that was just very evasive. And it was even trying to get underneath our patio blocks, and it was trying to get up underneath the, the siding of the house, and it was this viney thing, and yeah, it was given to me years ago, and I guess I just didn't realize how destructive it was. Yeah, I don't know what it is. My husband helped me dig up some of it, but the bulk of it, yeah, I dug up. And what a mess. I don't even think that I have it all up. I think that this is something that's going to want to continue to grow back. So what I'm hoping to do is to lay down some cardboard and then put dirt in that all on top and hopefully it won't come back. But what I don't know, and so again I'm asking you if you happen to know, if I put, I, I would really like to put my pumpkin here and I'm wondering will that stop my pumpkin then from taking root? See, I just don't know. But anyways, I'd appreciate if somebody would let me know whether that's a good idea or not, or if I should just like plant my pumpkin somewhere else and leave this alone until we see if we've gotten it all up. But yeah, I'll show you, it is a mess. So as you can see, we really had to dig down to get all of it out. And I still don't think it's all out. I think that you know, there, there's still some down in there because it was just such a horrible vine all connected to each other. And I might be able to find you a piece to show you what it looks like, but I have no idea what the plant name was. Cause like I said, it was given to me years ago and it was just given me as a small little thing. And then, so when it started to take off and multiply, I was actually kind of happy until, yeah, it decided to take over everything okay so this is it I dug this out where my husband had dumped a lot of it and as you can see it's kind of got this reddish if you can kind of see reddish stem and it gets actually a very pretty little, like, little cone type of flower that's white and at first it was maybe about 10 inches tall but as that plant matured and got bigger it got taller with the flower to the point where it was probably about 18 or 20 inches high but these vines here it just went 
all underground and they just all intertwined and they would try to get under the patio blocks and push up through. They were trying to get up underneath the, the house siding and push it out. And so, yeah, it had to go. Can't imagine what it wanted to do the foundation. <laughs> so this was it. I have no idea what it is. This would be a really good thing to have like on a steep hill that you didn't want to mow that was maybe out by a road where it just didn't matter. This would be ideal, but not by a house. That's for sure. Anyways, that's been my day. Digging and digging and digging. <laughs> but I hope that everybody's had a really good day and I will talk to all of you in just a little while. today's devotion, we will be reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 and 13. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You see, earlier in Matthew 9, in verses 1 to 8, Jesus forgives the sins of a paralytic man, and he healed him. And this caused some of the Jewish scribes to accuse him of blasphemy, claiming that he was saying he would have the authority to forgive sins. But Jesus knowing their thoughts, had said to them, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? Jesus wanted the scribes to know that his miracles testified of his deity. As God, he could easily forgive sins as he could heal diseases. And right after that happens, Jesus is passing by and sees Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he says to him, follow me. And Matthew gets up and he follows him. Now, the Pharisees, seeing that Jesus was sitting and dining with tax collectors and sinners, went up and questioned some of Jesus' disciples as to why was he sitting with them? Which brings us to today's scripture verses. When Jesus heard what the Pharisees had asked his disciples, he spoke to them and said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he instructs them to go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think you are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. The Pharisees were sick with sin, but they thought they were healthy. You see, the Lord desires acts of mercy on our part rather than showy sacrifices. If our religion makes us feel and look exalted and self-righteous. If we consider ourselves to be defiled by associating with certain type of people, then our sacrifices are meaningless. The scripture our Lord was telling the Pharisees to go and reread was Micah chapter 6 verse 8 where it says to obey is better than to sacrifice, which teaches us that the Lord requires only that we do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. I don't think Jesus was saying to the Pharisees that they shouldn't make sacrifices, but that he would prefer that they be merciful to those they considered beneath them 
rather than make public sacrifices proclaiming how devout they were. There is much wealth to be gleaned from our Lord's every word. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And don't for a moment think that you're not good enough to come before God because of your sins. In our scripture verses today, Jesus made it very clear that he did not come to earth for the healthy, but for sinners. So there's no excuse not to come to God. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.